Hey, good morning. Happened to be taking my morning walk. I figured it's a good time to say it by Torah. First of all, a little reflection on Rosh Hashanah and how blessed we feel by all the love and the support. It was just a memorable Rosh Hashanah. The weather was magnificent. God blessed us with that. We were at the most beautiful place and we set up 350 cheers and we thought we would have more than enough cheers. And it was so touching and moving to see so many people that we had to have over 100 people standing and so many children. And people were just so happy to be together in a safe environment, in an open space, celebrating, praying, seeing their friends and their community. Everyone sang so beautifully and prayed. And we hope that God will bless us with an awesome new year. Now we're preparing for Yom Kippur. We're expecting many more people. People keep on RSVPing, which is greatly appreciated. So we know they're coming and we can plan for them. And um, we're hoping the weather will hold up. So one of the most beautiful prayers we say on Rosh Hashanah is the, and through Yom Kippur is the prayer, prayer of Zachreinu L'chaim. We say, God, remember us for life. The King who seeks and wants life. And I saw a beautiful idea that says like this, what we're really asking God is Zachreinu L'chaim, not remember us for life, or remember us, remind us, Zachreinu, remind us how to live. Sometimes we forget the perspective of what it means to live. We forget what's important. We forget what we need, what we want. Where our focus should be. What are the essentials in life? On a day like today, 9-11, when we remember 20 years ago today, I'll never forget, it was the, day, it was the year I moved to Boston. And one of the terrorists slept the night before in the park in only a mile from our home. And I'll never forget waking up and hearing those terrible, devastating words and what came afterwards. Today, as we remember that, as we stand in that Sarasi made tshuva, we say, God, Zachreinu l'chaim, remind us what's a life worth living. What are the values of life? Give us perspective. After every crisis that someone survives, if it was the flooding amount of Hurricane Ida or anything else, people always say, but at least we have each other. Why do we have to come to crisis to remember that at least we have each other and what's important in life? Where are we traveling? What are we trying to accomplish? And that's what we say to God. Oh, you king who desires us to live a proper and a true life, remind us, guide us, inspire us to focus on why we live, what we live for, and what's important. There's a beautiful story about one of the sages Rabbi Hanan Wasserman of the past century, one of the greatest Talmudic scholars and rabbis who had a friend who came to visit him, an old friend from school. And this friend, although he was in yeshiva with Rabbi Hanan, they had divergent paths. He went into business and became a very wealthy and affluent man. And one day he was sitting, when he came to visit Rabbi Hanan, they're sitting together having breakfast and he turns to Rabbi Khan and he says, you know, I remember you in school. You were so much smarter than me. You were so much sharper than me, more intelligent. Imagine if you would have done like me and gone into business, how wealthy, how affluent you would have been. And Rabbi Khan Wasserman didn't say anything. He just looked at him. A couple of days later, his friend's ready to leave and Rabbi Khan escorts him to the train station comes to the train station and he gets onto the train that's supposed to take him to where he's going. And Rabbi Hanan notices that he's getting onto a train that's old, that's rickety, not the greatest train, old fashioned. And Rabbi Hanan tells him, why are you getting onto this old train? I see on the other track 
There's a brand new train, a beautiful train, a luxurious train with first class seats. And look at you, you're getting on to the old train. And the guy looks at Rabbi Hunter and says, I don't understand, what are you talking about? I can't go onto that train. It's not going to my destination. What does it help me if it's luxurious? What does it help me if it's beautiful? What does it help me if it has first class, if it's going the wrong way? It won't get me to my destination. And Rabbi Hunter watched him and looked at him and smiled and said, you just answered the question from a few days ago. Yes, maybe if I followed your path, I would have been affluent, I would have been successful. I would have been a millionaire or a billionaire. I would have been rich and famous. But what would it help me if it wouldn't get me to my destination? What's our destination in life? What are our essentials? What are the things we care about? The things we want for our children? The things that we would say in a time of crisis that we survive, but at least we have this, at least we have each other. My friends, on this September 11th, as we remember so many Americans who lost their life by terrorists, who hated the democracy we stood for, the beacon of light we were, the kindness we are. Let us realign our values. Let us have a paradigm shift and recognize that which is essential. Let us make sure that we get onto the right train, going the right way. Let us make sure that Zachreinu Lichayim, that we remember how to live. Not just remember to live, but remember what life is, what our values are, why we live, what it, what it means to be Jewish. And hopefully, with God's help, we will all be inscribed and sealed in the book of life. Zachreinu Lichayim, God will remember us to live a life full of value, full of meaning, full of Torah, full of Judaism. God bless you. Shabbat Shalom and hope to see many more of you over Yom Kippur services. God bless you.